Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Chelsea, and today we have a review for you using the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette. So there's been a lot of talk about this palette, and there's a lot of different re reviews and perspectives, and so I'm just here trying to give you my own. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned throughout the video because we're going to be doing three looks, including the one that I'm wearing now, um, in addition to swatches and then, of course, giving you my final thoughts at the end. If this is your first time visiting my channel, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel because I think you want to. I think you want to. And if this is your not first time watching this video, if you are a returning either viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your support and for constantly watching my video and commenting and liking them. It really does mean the world to me. So let's just get into this review because I'm excited. All right, so like I said, we have the Mercury Retrograde Palette. This is by Huda Beauty. And this is what the inside looks like. So some of the external features, first of all, this packaging is stunning. Do you see the holographic shift of the palette? Um, hopefully you can and my ring light is not blinding you. Um, I like that it's a very sturdy plastic. I love sturdy plastic um, palettes. I think it makes it so much easier to travel with and um, it just feels a little bit more luxe too. So this palette is $67. It's definitely not cheap. So I was glad that um, they use the hard plastic for this palette. Typically they use the cardboard packaging. Um, so I was happy that they did upgrade this to the plastic packaging. We do have a huge mirror here, not to blind you. And then we have the shade here. I'm pretty sure you are familiar with what these shades look like. So reading from Sephora, it says that the Mercury Retrograde palette features a cosmic blend of 18 shades and textures, balancing cool and warm tones to deliver infinite possibilities. And what else do you need to know? This palette is filled with easy to use combinations of dusty coppers, rosy pinks, golden totes, with pops of purple and blue. It features nine buttery mattes, six high shine creamy metallics, one glitter power charge with silver sparkles, and two sheer multi-reflective shadows for an out of this world glow. Let's insert some swatches here. And as you can see, these shadows are very pigmented in terms of swatches. Um, I heard one person, I posted this picture on my Instagram page. Um, one. One person was like, yeah, I'm interested to see how these work because those mattes look chalky. And I will say, looking at them, I, I could definitely see why that person looked at the shadows or the matte shades and was like, mm, chalky? But they are not. In terms of just how they feel, they don't feel chalky. They do feel quite creamy and buttery as they are described. Um, so I definitely wanted to just kind of put that out there. But of course, swatches don't mean anything because they could swatch pretty but perform differently. And we'll take a look at that in the demonstration. Something that I really wanted to point out that I, I thought was pretty neat about the layout of these colors. And um, I don't know, it just kind of stuck out to me. So looking at the shadow here, I mean, looking at the palette here, I like that you can actually, hold on, because I, I need to see while I'm talking. I like that you can actually, you you have quads of colors that you can use to create a full look in my opinion. A simple look, but a full look. So if you look here, you have just this one matte shade, but you could then add one or multiples of these shimmer and, and metallic shades to complete a look. Then you could do the same here. You could do the same here, here, here and here, which I think is pretty neat. Like that was honestly, when I opened up this palette and I looked at it, that was the first thing that I noticed. Like, man, you could kind of create different looks with just quads, different sections of the palette. And to me, I love when palettes do that, kind of takes the guesswork out of it for me. Um, and I, I don't know, I really like it. Not saying that, you know, everyone would just use every quad to create a look. Of course, you can use multiple colors across the palette. I mean, hey, it's just makeup. Um, but I, I thought that was pretty neat. And as a beginner, if I was looking at this and I noticed that, it might be easier to delve into this palette um, and not feel so intimidated. So that was the first thing that I wanted to point out in terms of things that I noticed about the palette. Another thing that stuck out to me is that this 
palette is very much a spring palette. I think if uh, Huda would have launched this palette in the spring, maybe, maybe it would have been received a little bit better. I've heard some not so positive reviews of the palette and there are different reasons why some people may not like it, why some people have returned it, but I kind of feel like if this were launched in the spring, like right around Easter, when we're really looking for like those pastel shades, those light shades, you know, you might, people might have received it a little bit better. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that I think this palette looks very similar to the Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. I actually had that palette. I did a review on my channel. I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I actually returned it. It was nice, but it wasn't like, I don't know, it didn't give me enough. If you look at this palette, I'm oh, sorry, I keep blending you all. If you look at this palette and if you remove, if you were to cover these shades right here, I think you've got a lot of the nude nude color scheme going on here. So that might be something to consider if you do have the new nude palette and you were kind of thinking the same thing, like this looks really similar to what I already have. I think it is pretty similar. Um, not saying there are repeat, shade, repeat shades in this palette and not saying that if you had the new nude palette, you still wouldn't enjoy this one, but it is something that I thought of too having had the palette, I was like, huh, if I just remove those kind of blue and purple colors, I kind of have the new nude palette. So those are just my initial thoughts on the palette that I wanted to get out there. Now let's go into the looks that I created. So I'm gonna prime my lids with the Luscious Angel's Eyes Primer. I think I wanna do a nice cool tone look. All right, so let's get started with Crash. Starting off with a E25 tapered blending brush. And there is some kick up in the pan. All right, now we are going to go in with the shade Ultraviolet. Still using the same brush. I'm gonna switch out my brush depending on how this performs. I'm gonna start packing that right on to outer edge of the eye. I'm gonna go in with a Morphe. M204 brush and I'm going to go in with the shade Nebula and I'm going to start off with this brush to see how it picks up. This is a more glittery shade. Um, I might have to switch to my finger depending on the texture of it. I'm going to tilt my head up and just start packing this on and I'm sort of going to blend that shade Nebula into Ultraviolet. Then I'm going to go in with the shade Momentum and I'm going to use that as a brow bone highlight. For the inner corner, I'm going to go in with the shade Cosmic. Right there. And also bring it down to the lower lash line. Go in with Supernova. And then the shade Karma. One eye done. I'm not gonna add eyeliner or mascara, but just to save on time and <laughs> my precious lids and the skin around my lids. I'm just gonna leave it like this. But this does give you an idea of a sorta of completed eye look and using the colors I did. So moving on to the next eye. I'm going in with a Sigma E25 brush and we're gonna start off with the shade Off Balance. And we're gonna use that as our transition shade. And I'm going to go in, the sh go in with the shade Haze. Start to pat that into the crease before blending it out. Now we're going to go in with Mercury and I'm taking a Morphe M124 brush and 
we are going to start packing that onto the lid. I'm starting with the center of the lid and I'm gonna work my way out. Going in with the same brush, and we're going to go to Super Moon. This shade, I definitely could benefit from using some glitter glue. Um, I'm not going to lay it down because I'm not going to be wearing this all day. But you are able to see the pigmentation of the shade, so that's good. Then we're going to go in with Hot Mess and I just want to add this a little bit, add a little bit of this to this outer edge right here where I didn't really apply a color. definitely have some fallout on my face from that shade Mercury. Um, not too much fallout on the side of my face. So going back in, the, in with the shade Haze, Okay, so these are my two looks. They are crazy because honestly, I just wanted to play with color. So this is not a look that I would wear out in public, but I just wanted to show you all as many colors as possible. So I know it's a bit much. I actually really do enjoy this eye. This eye, I wouldn't have used as many colors. I'd probably take out a few colors if I really wanted to wear it. But as you can see, you cannot deny these shimmers and these glitters. The next look that I'm gonna do is gonna be more of a wearable look, kind of your everyday look, so stay tuned. Going in with the shade Karma. And we're going to use that as our transition shade. Then I'm gonna go in with the shade Vortex with a Wingosh 26S brush. Concentrate that in the outer corner of the eye. Okay, now I'm going to go in with the shade Frazzle. This shade is um, very similar to Nebula, so I'm actually gonna go in with some glitter glue. I'm gonna go in with the NYX glitter glue, so now we're gonna go in with gold glitch, and we're just going to start pressing it into this inner corner area because it is more of a glitter. I want it to really adhere to the glitter glue face. We're gonna go into the shade Momentum to set the bubble. Onto the lower lash line, the home stretch. So let's go in with Hot Mess. We'll go in with a little bit of Vortex on the very outer portion of the eye. I'm gonna go in with Off Balance to further blend out that lower lash line. I'm gonna bring that shade all the way in. And then for my inner corner, I choose Galaxy.
Okay, I think our eye look is done. I'm going to go off camera, do my mascara and lashes, and I'll be back to wrap up this video. Okay, so what are my final thoughts? First of all, everybody wants to know, do I think, not everybody wants to know, but you might wanna know, do you think that you need this palette? In my opinion, I don't think anyone needs this palette um, because once again, if you remove those blue, green, and purple colors, especially if you have the new nude palette, you almost have this palette. Those are, that is my initial thought. Now, coming from someone who does not have the new nude palette anymore, um, will I keep this palette? Yes, I will keep it, and this is why. I thoroughly enjoyed using this palette. The three looks that I created with it, I was really pleased with them. Even the one that was on this side that was kind of wacky because I used too many colors, but I really enjoyed the pigmentation of the colors. I really enjoyed how vibrant and how beautiful they are. Mattes really did blend very well. The only matte that I had a problem with is the shade Vortex, this dark color right here. And I think the reason why I had such a hard time with it was because I didn't set my eye primer. I just left it tacky and I felt like it just kept sticking to parts of my eye and it didn't really want to move. Whereas the other parts of my eye that maybe the eye primer wasn't as concentrated, those mattes blended very well over it. I didn't feel like I had to um, really struggle with any of the mattes. So next time, especially with this shade Vortex, next time I use it with an eye primer, I probably will just set it with a powder to see if it blends a little bit more smoothly. But all of the other mattes that I used blended very well, very creamy. They were really easy to use and I do think this palette could be a pretty okay palette for a beginner in terms of the mattes blending very well. The metallic shades were so gorgeous. I mean like, look at this reflectiveness of my eye. And then the glitter shades, what I really liked about the glitter shades were that they were very soft and not chunky. So yes, you can tell it's a glitter shade. Um, you saw me in the demo with this particular eye look using a glitter glue on the inner corner of my eyes to make sure it, that it did adhere. It is a glitter shade, but I love that it's not chunky, that it's not um, <clears throat> like gritty. I don't like glitters like that. I like very smooth textured glitters, and I feel like these glitters are like that. Um, like I mentioned in my tutorial, with the shade Glowed Gold Glitch and Nebula, I would use a glitter glue just to make sure it adhered to the eye throughout the day. Um, I did get Fallout with those two shades. I also got Fallout with Ultraviolet and Mercury, that um, bright blue-green color and the bright purple color. Um, and I still kind of have some Fallout on my face, but that's okay. Um, if I would have done my eyes first, it wouldn't have been a problem. And actually, most of the Fallout I got off my eye when I wiped those first two looks off. Um, I just had a little bit of residue left over. With the matte shades, there is kick up in the pan, but I didn't feel like I had really fallout on my eye um, once I just tapped off the excess, so that was nice. I'm very pleased with this palette, and I think I will use it a lot in the spring. For now, I'll still use it because I feel like some of these glitter shades I can use around the holidays and just, you know, kind of amp up, amp up my look. But I know for me, around the holidays, I like to use like dark vampy looks with um, maybe like a concentrated pop of blue. I don't know, that's just what I like around the winter time. But I could definitely see me reaching for this palette a lot when the spring comes. So that's why I said earlier in my video, I think if this palette would have been launched in the spring, it might have been accepted a little bit more. Some people said that they just weren't happy with the formula. I absolutely love the formula, and for those reasons, that's why I'm keeping this palette. And what I remember when I used the new nude palette, I like this palette much more because, number one, I love the packaging, but two, it does give me a little bit more versatility of color, and I feel like if I would have had the new nude palette and this one, I wouldn't touch the new nude palette anymore. I just would go for this one. The one last con that I want to point out about this palette and the one that might be most important depending on your complexion is the depthness of this palette. Looking at this palette, these shades are quite light. 
I will say the lighter shades showed up a lot better on me than I thought they would. So for instance, this shade Mercury right here um, that I used for my brow bone highlight, I was like, whoa, this shade is pigmented. Um, so I like that the shades show up on me, but I do not like that this is basically the only shade I can go in to add depth to my eye look because if I'm using, like, you know, what if I wanted to use all three of these shades, but I wanted to add something to deepen the outer crease just to kind of smoke it out, I gotta use this one. I mean, I could go potentially into Hot Mess to do that, but I don't like that that is the deepest shade. And for that reason, this palette may not, may not work for my people of color that have deeper, richer complexions. If you have this palette and you do have a deeper complexion, please leave in the comments below if this works for you and if you like it. I do, like I said, I do wish these shades would have been a bit more deep, a bit more rich, so that it really could work for a wide spectrum of shades. I'm very excited that I do have this palette. I think it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And like I said, based on the things that I said, you can decide on if this palette is for you, if it's not for you. Um, I definitely, like I said, I don't think you need this palette. I really don't. But I think if this fits your color scheme of what you're looking for, um, if you have the money to invest in this palette and you feel you would get good use out of it, then I think it's a quality palette. And like I said, I'm keeping it. I'm very happy with it. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope that you really enjoyed it and found it useful and helpful. Definitely leave me in the comments below your thoughts on the palette, how you feel the eye looks turned out. Like I said, if you have it and you do or you don't like it, please leave that in the comments below so that other people can gain some perspective based off what you're saying because I'm just one person. But you know, everybody has their own opinion. So thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.